hi this thing is my readiness uh, netgear nas server uh, uh, the model is uh, rn104 i have discussed a few episodes uh, regarding the same like uh, factory default settings and ssh access and stuff so it's quite a little handy nas and it still works fine now uh, although i have uh, uh, removed some couple of uh, drives and i was doing some reconfiguring uh, stuff when i built this uh, you know free nas server so uh, it was been uh, used as a mirror uh, server uh, mirror nas server i can do some r sync and uh, stuff uh, but again i need some uh, spare drive i thought uh, let me rebuild this because if you you know uh, upgrade anything it takes a while and uh, if you change any drive and uh, if you resilver it or something like that it again takes a lot of time so the big issue with this you know or any such uh, nas devices is that uh, you know you get uh, uh, these devices uh, are well suited for uh, uh, you know beginners and also somebody who is in uh, in photography media and stuff which uh they can readily use them uh, which is a main point of getting some solution like this but uh, the other aspect about these nas servers is uh, they really lack in terms of performance uh, or if you need more uh, higher performance models uh, it can get quite expensive but still you can't beat a diy build or something like this because you get extreme control in terms of every aspect but you should have uh, uh the know how and also the passion in terms of doing your uh, diy stuff so anyway since uh, i was not uh, quite into nas and uh, i was quite hesitant at that point of time uh, uh, like uh, i took this around 2015 or something like that so at that point of time i just decided to get something like this so you can see here it is a cool little device it has this uh, four base uh Yep, you can see here it, it has still drives populated couple of them and couple of them are empty uh, which i am going to take it out and uh, the issue with this is it lacks kind of you know performance and uh, i don't uh, switch on my nas uh, 247 i know that uh, many uh, uh, users so generally they use this as home uh, cloud based or some uh, some kind of storage solution uh, or they store movies and stuff but in my case uh, that is not the thing uh, i store uh, some important backups and as well as the youtube uh, videos and uh, stuff so i don't do that way so it is perfectly fine i turn on and turn off whenever i need in fact i am not using this uh, front port as well uh, you can see here i have taped it down so that uh, dust and other things don't enter into the device and uh, one uh, aspect about this device is some of the devices uh, generally you get uh, some access here and then you can upgrade its ram and uh, other stuff so in this case you don't have such a provision uh, this uh, uh, you know uh, runs uh, some type of uh, linux uh, distro and the processor of this uh, device you can see here i long ago benchmark uh, this has this uh, arm v7 marvel armada 370 slash xp processor um you can compare this processor uh, have given me around uh, so and so true bench uh, benchmark so 4690 seconds to complete uh, because it's a linux uh, you know device uh, so you can cross compile uh, any i mean i cross compiled my true bench code uh, for arm and then uh, i was able to get the benchmarks on the same so this is what is the score i got and if you compare with uh, pi 3 it just takes around uh, you know 1278 seconds so you can imagine this is like three or four times you know slower than that but nevertheless this is far better than some of the processors uh, you can find below okay so in that aspect it is far better than that so this comes with uh, you know these uh, dual uh, gigabit ethernet uh, ports and as well as this uh, eSATA and uh, stuff like that and it doesn't have any redundant power supply it just comes with this but the power supply cable clicks onto that so accidentally you can't yank it out and some you know things like that and uh, other than that it has this fan and it has this stuff uh, sometimes you can uh, zip tie this uh, cables and all even i do zip tie my power cable to the same so that accidentally it's not pulled and other stuff so i thought uh, i do one thing i just uh, open this stuff and then uh, i have a look at its a uh, board i even had some plans uh, is it possible to change this 
motherboard or is it something that i can get some sort of a pie or some type of diy and entirely replace this board itself because uh, the one thing i am not happy about it is uh, the way uh, the md raid uh, it's been put inside uh, it's it's just works fine but you know after i tested free nas uh, i can't go behind uh, you know something like this because that has lot more uh, finer control than something like this so anyway i thought uh, if not i anyway if i use this as a you know a mirror uh, server it is still fine uh, one aspect is i need to check the processor if the processor is doing frequent uh, frequency scaling and uh, thermal throttling uh you know it is going to throttle your <laughs> performance so yeah, if possible i need to you add some uh, cpu heat sink or something like that of course i can't act uh, you know add some fan or something over there it just doesn't have that enough space so what we can do is before i continue uh, we can remove this uh, drives it's a fun little piece uh, this also gives you uh, an uh, you know access in terms of you know doing any diy and uh, stuff so which is when i thought i can do this uh, on camera uh, in general things like this i do off camera but today i thought uh, i do this on camera so that uh, it is fun and i can share also the things which i usually work upon okay yep so this is the first drive uh, uh, this is a seagate nasa drive uh, this is uh, a 4 terabyte uh, drive uh, you can see here it is mentioned as 4 tb uh hope i can able to show that to the camera so this is 4tb and uh, let me pull the other drives so this is the first drive and i believe this doesn't have any drive so you can see here it's a empty drive caddy so let's put that aside even this thing also this uh, build quality what i like about it is uh, it is amazing and uh, you it is quite strong steel and this is important for any such data storage stuff because you don't need any sort of uh, you know uh, solar radiation or something like that so that it can cause issue with your storage and stuff so it kind of protects any such little bit of electromagnetic you know stuff uh, radiation and stuff so you can see here even uh, this front there is a metal piece so the hard drives are completely encapsulated with this type of you know stuff so it is kind of protected and it is also not thin which is why it is you know weighs quite significant okay so this is also an empty caddy uh the last one is uh, populated i believe this is a 3 terabyte uh, hitachi or something okay so oh yeah this is not hitachi the other one i think uh, which i removed long back so this one is again it's a seagate uh, barracuda drive Uh, it's a consumer grade uh, drive that one is a nas drive but whereas this is a consumer grade right uh, this is uh, yeah this is a 3 terabyte drive so this also works fine uh, with no issues so let me keep this safely away so behind there is this uh, back plane you can see here and you get all this sata uh, you know ports over there along with that sata power supply so it has this back plane this entire back plane is connected to that you know the motherboard which is over here okay the motherboard is over here and the entire back plane is connected to some type of uh, pci like interface okay so it looks like pci maybe it is standard pci itself so i can get a bit zoom so that you can have a look so before i completely tear it apart okay yeah so you can see there this is the back plane and it slots in to that you know motherboard on top so if i want to do some hack after several years okay there are certain possibilities i can remove this entire board and i can put some type of uh, single board computer and i can still repurpose this case the thing i liked about this case is quite robust and it is quite compact unlike you get this entire huge pc and if uh, it's a single board computer so anyway the power uh, supply is going to be an external power source uh, you don't need to worry about and still it has this sort of a clip and i can connect to this ethernet cables and all inside and then just you know uh, pull uh, extend them just outside okay so you don't need to have this interfaces either in the back so i can just uh, think all sorts of possibilities with this okay the case is quite interesting so uh with that thing said what we do is so we can start uh, removing the screws uh, 
uh, i once uh, tried uh, you know opening uh, some of these uh, screws because i thought uh, is there a provision for upgrading uh, memory and uh, stuff so it is not possible <laughs> so anyway first we remove this uh, side you know panels uh, this side panels uh, and then we can uh, proceed in terms of removing the, the other things okay so since i generally do diy from my childhood i am quite fine in case if you have any working stuff and if you are not into those things i suggest you to be you know proceed with caution so this thing i am sure after i open and i can put back together and it will work fine so it's just you know it's just built in a nice way without any much of you know plastic stuff which you need to pry it open and stuff so yeah so this thing removed uh the side panel i can remove it's quite let me put it this way yeah you can see here it just opens like a pc case side panel so okay so this thing is removed and uh, you can see there is this uh, uh flat cable uh, which i suppose it is connecting to this front lcd okay so this you know front lcd so this flat cable is connecting to the motherboard i need to carefully remove this cable so that it is uh, disconnected so that we can even remove the motherboard itself so before that i remove the other side panel and um, we see what else we need to do okay kind of uh, gets on its way uh, when uh, whenever uh, i tried removing the same as i said i removed this uh, side panels and had a bit of tough time because it it something it gets you know get stuck so it's not like a you know simple pc case <laughs> okay it's just you need to just to fiddle around okay uh yeah sometimes uh, this uh, rubber feet gets on its way so sometimes it is uh, good to remove them if you are unable to put back together but in this case you can see i can able to remove it and uh, like you see you know this thing is you know quite hard <laughs> this is not like you know pc case uh, you know panels which you often see even i have this cooler master it is quite uh, you know thin compared to this this is it also weighs quite significant okay it's just quite hard you know yeah with that thing removed uh, i can see some kind of dust build up here uh, i can get a small piece of cloth and i can little wipe it down this thing is i have done a vacuum clean so uh, there is nothing much to you know let me see if i grab some some kind of piece of cloth eh? i think this should do and let me just little bit wet it okay so it's fine i have this kind of distil water over here so that it is quite safe okay. uh it's still fine uh, we are not wiping with any sort of you know this thing after you blow dry blow and uh, then vacuum clean still you will get some amount of you know dust like this so let me anyway clean this stuff i'm seeing all possibilities how i uh, upgrade this in the future before i redeploy this okay yep so done yep it's quite clean enough uh the next thing i need to do is i think i need to remove this uh, top panel so there are these uh, four screws this is what i think i have tried earlier also so that uh, to check if i get any access uh, to change any ram or something but in this case uh, what they have done is uh, they have soldered the memory chips on the motherboard itself uh, you can't uh, upgrade this yes so this thing is removed uh let me just carefully lift this it's all identical screws you don't need to much worry about which is what i liked about its design it's quite easy to put back together and uh, things like that yes so this is over and uh, these two things are removed i sometimes uh, get queries uh, 
from uh, regular users uh, in terms of uh, buying any NAS uh, device or something all I can suggest is never buy those uh, two drive NAS uh, servers because in case if you want to upgrade or something you can't much do with them you, you just need to configure as a RAID 1 and uh, you know stuff like that it just do that uh, it just does that mirroring and other than that it doesn't do anything and uh, in case you want to upgrade or do something there is no much possibilities uh, you can expect with some kind of hardware device like that yeah you can see here uh, this thing removed uh, you can see there is this uh, cutout and some models have that uh, memory uh, thing exposed here so that you can uh, uh, add new modules over here but in this uh, case it doesn't have that okay so this is rn104 uh, this doesn't have that okay so let me again grab this piece of cloth i can see again there is this dust build up okay so yep so this thing wiped out what we can do is the next thing is i think we need to remove this uh, uh, back uh, fan uh, there is some kind of a tab they provided so i just have to remove this so there are multiple screws there are these uh, screws over here and then uh, screws over here and for the fan itself there is uh, there are these uh, four screws over here i don't think so i need to remove these screws i just need to remove this so that this entire stuff comes out like some kind of a hinge or something okay again these are identical screws it is quite easy to uh, you know remove and you can uh, you don't need to keep anything aside and uh, remember which one goes where okay all are identical in this thing yep so two more to go Uh, so recently hope you may be watching my open wrt series uh, which is when i thought uh, even this thing is there any possibility i need to check if there is any such a build is available in some cases what uh, i can also do is i can use this uh, motherboard as some kind of a you know routing uh, device or something okay because anyway it runs linux i can make this into a router uh, you know and put some single board computer over here which is more faster and stuff this thing the main advantage is it's quite uh, stable and it is quite robust okay yeah you can see here um, this thing it opens up like this and uh, this is that uh, backplane which is slotted to that motherboard so uh, looks like this is like a standard uh, fan connector over here hope you can see there okay so let me just pull it out in a process i i want to also clean it inside so that uh, if i put back together it is clean enough uh, next time uh, for the entire new build okay yes you can see there this is a regular fan connector okay so so this uh, fan speed again you can adjust in the <coughs> readiness uh, software uh, which is quite handy because uh, uh, whichever uh, environment or ambient temperature depending on the season you can change its uh, you know fan uh, rpm and uh, stuff like that generally i keep it high because it has again like i said it has the tendency of processor getting overheated and stuff so i generally keep it quite high okay <coughs> and moreover in my case i don't turn on uh, 247 which is still uh, fine uh, so i can keep some setting something like that okay so with that thing removed uh, the next thing is uh, you have this uh, six different type of screws over there uh, to remove this uh, back panel uh, i think uh, before i remove this uh, motherboard which is uh, screwed over here so let me just get this zoom so you can have a look yes so you can see there before i remove these screws and uh, slot you know slide this motherboard out i need to remove this uh, slotted uh, you know back plane okay so it has all this six screws so let me just quickly remove the same and uh, we can get to the other things so so i'm uh, done with the same uh, it's uh, fairly simple i guess uh, from now i have to somehow slide it down okay <laughs> I need to hold in this uh, weird position and do in this way because uh, if I keep somewhere on the desk and then I have this uh, tough time of mounting this camera in some way so that it points out 
whatever i am doing and it stays in focus and stuff so i felt then that this is far more simpler of course i need to you know hold it carefully but still fine okay so let me just slide this down you can see there so this is uh, again like i said this looks like a standard uh, pcie okay but it is in this awkward uh, you know shape yep so it is slided down and uh, hope it comes out okay there's something which is catching over here let me just yes so this thing is removed so this is the back plane which you seen earlier so this is the back plane you can see there uh, like i said this uh, looks like a, a standard the pcie so let me zoom and show you that it looks interesting so you can see there okay so this is the back plane okay get this focus yeah you can see there and uh, you can see it has some kind of components okay both smd as well as uh, no other components so yeah this looks like 4x or something you know pcie 4x or something okay so it looks like that yes so hope you can so you can see it has some layer of dust which i want to clean it before i start putting this back so you can see there it has all this uh, set of stuff of course you can't put any you know uh, it is not like you no know, sas connector it is a setup so so this is the back plane let me keep it aside so now to the main board uh, the main board is quite simple it has this uh, you know two screws and uh, before i remove i think i am supposed to remove this uh, Uh, front uh, capacity and other status led panel so you can see here you have this lcd display and uh, i can remove this by carefully lifting this you know tab yes so with this thing removed uh, the motherboard should able to slide out quite easily okay i have to remove these two screws so these two screws again they are little different than what it was you know so far been removed yes so this thing this thing have uh, some type of uh, debug pins over there so i'm kind of careful that i don't uh, you know bend them so it looks like a small uh, header yeah i believe now we can slide out okay yes so you can see there okay so now it is almost empty it doesn't have this main board inside so it just has this empty shell okay it has this still the switch front switch and other stuff but it is just a flexible plastic it doesn't touch anywhere okay yeah so this is the one and uh, uh this looks interesting uh, i thought uh, the processor doesn't have any heat sink or something like that but it turns out it has this uh, you know heat sink uh, they have put i believe this is the main uh, processor uh, okay this is the main processor and um, i'm not sure what is this thing is this may be the, the seta controller or something and moreover you can see there it has this uh, regular pci uh, type of thing i believe this is pci only but it it is put in this kind of a way, you know way okay so hope you can see this okay so what it interests me is uh, this is not like a standard uh, pc or something and this is also not like you know spc or something where you find it quite often so which is why it is quite fascinating to see what is there inside and moreover since it runs uh, you know linux uh, you can still tinker around you can ta you know you can play around and in case if you have your own custom firmware or something you know you can even um, change the operating system and you can do all possible things okay 
so this is what uh, like i said uh, i suppose this is the memory chips or this may be the memory chip i am not sure this is uh, hk inx uh, so i believe this is uh, its uh, memory and uh, maybe this is uh, its a uh, you know flash storage or something i'm i'm not sure i'm not interested to see any of its specs either much yeah even this is uh, mentioned as sk inx uh, uh, maybe this is uh, your memory chips and this is its uh, you know flash storage or something okay so this is what so it is quite interesting and uh, this uh, gives a picture that there is nothing much i can change with this board i just need to live with the same with whatever they have provided there is only one option if i need something completely different then i need to completely take out this board and put some type of uh, single board computer and then uh, uh, i can just uh, you know put some freenas or something like that or open media vault or something like that and i can tinker around okay so in the back you can see it's interesting it has this usb 3 uh, i'm sorry it's not usb 3 it's a eserta port just one eserta port and it has this uh, two usb 2 ports and it has this uh, gigabit ethernet port so again in this case i have done uh, link aggregation stuff so you can do all those things and uh, this is the thing which i was uh, mentioning okay so let me grab this focus so here is the interesting bit you can see there are some four pins over here i am suppose uh, this is to debug or do something out of it i'm not sure whether they have mentioned about it in the product manuals and here is that factory reset button and this is the eset port and these are this usb 2 ports and uh, gigabit ethernet you know ports and here is the closer look of the board you can see this is the one and uh, like i said i'm not sure this may be the flash and this may be the ram chips anything is possible uh, if i go through its uh, you know uh, you know specs maybe i can figure it out what is this all about but anyway i'm not that interested so this looks like as some kind of storage controller or sata controller since it is quite uh, you know in this close vicinity of this uh, you know this stuff so that's what okay so let me get it bit closer so that you can even more have a look closer look yeah you can see there you can see there so let me flip this around because this is oriented in this way you can have a look and uh, the interesting thing is the front leds so you can see there it generally shows the disk status and other stuff if there is any faulty disk and stuff and you can do reset and other stuff so this is usually mounted in this direction so here is the power button and uh, things like that so this is what it is and uh, you can put any uh, usb drive and you can do some quick backups and uh, stuff like that okay copy your stuff from usb to the nas server through this port or you can use these two ports so this is useful because it is in the front direction you can put any small usb drives but if you have any large external usb drives or hard drives or something you can use these two ports or directly you can use it via eserta also so eserta is quite handy if you want to extend this storage to other hard drives okay so this is what so like you see there is nothing in the back side of this board uh, you can see in this way there's nothing much to it okay it's just nothing in that okay so hope you can see that there's nothing much to the back side of the board and there is no provision to add anything in that okay yep so hope you find it interesting so this uh, is you know the main drawback is uh, the processor itself so i i was quite uh, bugged up with the specs uh, but initially it was fine but uh, you know it doesn't have that uh, uh, you know uh, factor to kind of saturate the gigabit ethernet uh, Uh, speeds okay so it can give you up to 300 mbps or uh, up to 250 to 400 mbps but in case if you enabled any compression or something 
then it is going to drop down okay so you need to deal with that and you need to be aware of its limitations so this is not something like x86 or something that's why uh, these days uh, there are uh, netgear uh, models with uh, atom processor uh, also you have some with xeon and the stuff they are quite expensive uh, otherwise you may have uh, some models with uh, xeon uh, uh if not xeon maybe celeron and stuff so you know it is quite interesting so this is what so battery everything is working fine i don't think so i need to change i'm not again not sure why they kept the battery over here here instead they could have extended somewhere there so that from the back side you can easily change that okay these days anyway you can find some uh, batteries on single board computers with some kind of wire attached to it so they could have provided that than you know mounting on the motherboard like this which you need to tear literally the entire board and then you need to chain this single battery okay so that's what uh, it's quite interesting mm, i need to see if uh, this uh, thermal pad or anything have degraded or something in that case i can uh, you know all i can do is some you know i can put new thermal paste and stuff or else a new thermal pad uh, there is no much space left to, to keep any extra fan or something so that is one thing but i i can tell you one thing is it fairly gets hot i have seen it uh, you know you can monitor its uh, temperature and uh, stuff in the ui and it fairly gets hot it gets at the range of 65 to 70 degrees celsius i'm you know so it fairly gets hot quite frequently so if you are doing any disk upgrade if you are doing any faulty drive replacement something like that this thing gets quite hot that is why i have kept that fan uh, all the time at full speed so that it is not um, getting heated up because it doesn't have any direct cooling over here all it has to do is suck the hot air uh, out from the device which includes uh, both the motherboard as well as the drives installed so everything together it is going to suck the hot air all it is done via this uh, you know single uh, you know fan at the back so which quite worries me because if there are some dual fan or something there will be some amount of redundancy but this doesn't have because it's a very uh, basic compact uh, you know nas server it's a very you know it's like a budget model at that point of time uh, you know so that's what so hope you enjoyed this uh, teardown uh, i would call that this is not uh, something i thought about uh, you know doing in front of the camera as well so these are things i generally do at home uh, you know whenever i do some changes or upgrades or something but i thought this time i do something um, on camera so that uh, i can show you guys uh, you know how it looks like and in case if you are interested you can tear down your uh, you know devices in this way and you can uh, learn a lot this is uh, you know this is a very standard uh, linux system uh, which is customized and ported so that it works on something like this okay so this is quite fun uh, you can do ssh you can do few things around you can also cross compile some small applications i have that uh, you know compiler uh, cross compiler uh, tool chain uh, you know built so i have done uh, uh few other applications uh, for this and uh, it is quite fun i have also got uh, some uh, comments uh, people uh, requesting me how i get access to their uh, netgear nas servers and stuff so some models i'm not sure they are not allowing the ssh access uh, but i'm lucky that this has that ssh access at least that way i can uh, have fun with this and if something goes wrong anyway you can do a factory reset and stuff and uh, and also i'm impressed that it has this uh, periodic updates and stuff so it's quite a uh, interesting uh, piece of equipment okay so even now if i want i can just uh, put this power i can keep the board as it is on the table okay like this and uh, i can connect this uh, power and uh, put this uh, nic card uh, i mean connect this uh, network cables and then uh, i can get access to its operating system that easy it is okay i can even show it on camera so let me do it i'll turn on this other ups and uh, let us see it shows any errors and warnings and stuff because we have removed this uh, front led lcd i mean led backlit lcd so and moreover this back plane is removed let's see if it shows any you know warnings and stuff okay yep 
so yeah this thing is connected so i can just put this power back this yes so i just uh, connected its uh, power so we can quickly turn on the power yes it's powering on uh, i can do one thing i can just you know show you guys the stuff getting accessed okay so you can see there it's just that easy okay yeah hope you can see there so just turning on hope it shows all warnings and stuff because it is missing lot many things than what it existed before okay so yes so let it come up yeah so i can access its uh, you know this is the one so let's just quickly access and see that it you know gets connected so looks like having some problems so ping 192 168 to 0 0.99 so what i'm worried is uh, the software may find uh, the backplane or uh, the disks are missing or something like that i'm not sure is it going to fire up any event or warnings and even that front uh, lcd I'm not sure how far it is going to satisfy its initialization criteria because it's not any BIOS or something. It doesn't. I don't think so. It will have that, you know, full-fledged BIOS or something. So it's not coming up. Uh, I believe the network. Everything is fine. Let me have a quick check. Yeah. So it is uh, kind of you know uh, turning on and off its uh, front uh, power LED. So I believe it is somehow it is not happy with <laughs> whatever the things put with that. So I can do a hard reset once and try that if this time it passes, okay. So one more thing is, uh, as you have seen, uh, we have removed its uh, fan. Uh, maybe it may see that uh, the fan is not available or fan is dead or something. It may imagine that uh, there is a failure in that fan. So it's quite uh, dangerous to you know, turn on the device without any working fan or something. I, I'm not sure. So I need to check its uh, manual. So if it is a con constant uh, blinking LED, then what could be its you know, problem? So. So I am still 100% sure once I put back together it should work fairly fine so uh, it's not an issue so yeah anyway I let me just turn this off and we take it out from this stuff. So something it is not happy about because it's been uh, not connected with all those things and uh, like I said anything can be a criteria it's a uh, you know the if you notice here to the back plane is where they have attached this fan and again this is not going to be a standard PCI although it looks like a PCI I'm not sure so something it may trigger any warning alert or something and it is it is not allowing the board to come to the stable state so it is doing some type of hardware check and uh, i think something it is missing so it is complaining that it is not you know good to go after that point
So hope you guys loved watching this video. Like I said, this is not some teardown uh, uh, strictly. This is my workflow and a video log. I thought uh, last moment, uh, let me capture this in the camera so that you can enjoy as well. So if you guys have anything to discuss, uh, post your queries in YouTube comments or be in touch via mail. Thanks a lot for joining me. Stay tuned. Have a nice day. Bye bye. In case if you are wondering it might not uh, work or something like that I have just quickly put back together just the motherboard and the back plane uh, to check and also this uh, uh, you know flat cable I have reconnected. Uh, I just want to see that it, this thing this time at least it uh, boots up okay. So uh, like I said I can think one thing is I can put a very small uh, fan over here and I can uh, connect it in some way to this board or else I can provide some kind of external power supply. The reason is I just need some air movement over there so that it is not you know getting overheated or something especially the processor over there versus the fan is over all the way down here and that heat sink is also not so large okay. So I just put this back together so we can try once again if it works this time okay. And before I go, you can see it still doesn't have this, you know, slots uh, put back, the drive slots. Uh, yep, I just connected the cables and uh, it turned on this time. Uh, I can able to see that welcome stuff. You can see there, welcome to Netgear and it is showing loading. Yes, booting and it shows uh, finding disks or something maybe this is where it stopped because nothing was there or something which is you know existing in the previous boot okay let us see if this time it boots up okay yep yeah, it still shows the booting and uh, we can try sometime and uh, see that if it boots up, okay. Maybe earlier uh, it was uh, in this uh, status, maybe I have just not noticed and I quickly rushed to that, okay. It still shows the booting, okay. It's quite uh, taking a bit longer time uh, than it happens uh, usual so let me see I just don't want to you know speed up uh, or do something yeah you can see now it shows uh, some progress bar booting and it shows the progress bar uh, let's see I think it is uh, reanalyzing uh, that whatever pre-configured uh, you know settings and it is seeing that uh, if anything is missing so that it collectively reports some warnings and errors and stuff like that okay so i do have uh, some students uh, who work in uh, firmware hardware and uh, stuff like that so some of these episodes are quite uh, i believe is going to be fun for them and apart from i do have viewers who are into system admin and uh, network administration and uh, stuff like that so so when I cover, I keep in aspects of these things so that there is a learning curve for everyone. If you are a network admin, it is interesting to tinker around with this kind of stuff so that you learn something end of the day. And if you are a firmware developer, if you work in hardware and stuff, it is still going to be fun to know and learn about these aspects. Okay. So it still shows the booting, it's around 97-98%, I believe any time it's going to come up, okay. I have removed all the volumes, yeah, it shows uh, readiness uh, 104 and it shows its status and uh, I think any time its IP is going to come up, okay, the IP address for those ports. So let's wait and watch. Uh, it shows readiness is in uh, safe mode. I'm really not sure what is it meant. Yeah, it shows the IP 
it is in uh, 248 i think it has uh, changed its ip or something it is it is not the one which i have set to 248 248 yeah you can see it is able to ping i have set it as a 99 or something it it must have changed its ip so that way in the ui we give that ip whatever it has reported 248 and uh, i am not sure this is uh, uh, I need to check whether it is, uh, you know, requesting me the factory default or something. I'm really not sure. Let me try this. But anyway, uh, it has come up. Uh, I need to give cancel and let us see readiness. Uh, readiness RN104 default username password. Okay something it must have reset or something like that because the IP address should not change okay so let us see what is its default username password The community of uh, readiness is quite uh, nice, uh, they can provide you some extent of support although I have seen people who lost uh, some volume and stuff, admin and password, we try with this, uh, sorry password is not due to the security reasons, we, uh, we can go back and we can, we can just access this way, 248, admin, admin password yeah uh, it has gone to that initial uh, you know settings mode and uh, stuff like that next don't save yeah it it shows this uh, welcome screen i think it it has purged the stuff and uh, stuff like that anyway I'm, i i too don't need that because uh, I'm, I'm anyway going to rebuild the stuff and uh, it is still good if i can start everything from scratch and uh, it it must have done some factory reset something like that i'm not sure maybe if i populate the disks it may you know show up the previous settings I, i'm really not sure this is something i never fiddled around like this okay so hope you enjoyed the same i thought uh, this part i just want to clip after the main session is over so that it is like extended portion it's up to you you can watch you can skip it's just up to you okay yeah it's fun little device <laughs> 248 yes uh, i'm not sure i think one of the ports is enabled uh, of course uh, the lacpy stuff whatever i have done link aggregation i'm not sure the bonding link aggregation it's not going to exist anymore one of the nic cards is enabled maybe the other one uh, network port is disabled or something okay hmm. yeah you can see it starts everything from the beginning so this one